Hey guys, what's up? What's up? It is um December the 14th, I believe. And I just want to show you some of the stuff that I still have that I made. Um, a lot of the stuff I made has already gone to their forever homes. Um, several hats, some circle scars, headbands, that stuff's already out gone. And I did a but I took pictures on my Instagram. She spins S H E S P I N S on Instagram. So you could go over there and check out some of the stuff I made. Um so I'm gonna just show you what I still have on me. And because I like short I don't even consider this a podcast. It's more like what I'm I'm up to, what am I doing, what's going on, you know. Um so I'll show you what I'm working on and some of the projects that are coming up. Um God, it's right here warm. Okay, so there's a black pair of mittens over on my Etsy. Now, those are made for my husband because both like I said, both our cars are well his truck is fixed. He just needs the shield is rubbing on the rotor so they just gotta he just gotta take it and have them bend the shield back away from the rotor. Um and uh, so I made him some mittens because he's been catching the bus. He's from New York, so catching the bus and stuff is something that he's used to doing. Um, and so he was getting on the bus, first time wearing them, I think, or maybe it was the second time wearing them. And he lost one of the mittens. So he called, he sends me a text message, I lost one of the mittens. I said, so am I going to have to teach you like a, treat you like a child, put a string on your mittens to thread through your clothes? He was like, mm, you know, kind of thing. So I made a replacement mitten, and I took some red yarn, and I made, and I did a chain from one mitten to the other. Now he's tall, so he got a long wingspan, but it's long enough that it'll, they'll go through his sleeves and stuff, and then they hang, you know, and you put the mittens on. So I don't have to worry about him losing the mittens no more, because that's like three hours of work. Um, and I also have to count. I can't just eyeball, you know, the mittens. And then I also, since it's crochet and I'm using a, a thicker wool and the larger hook, I also have to take and weave in yarn in the areas where there might be gaps at. And so I had <clears throat> to take care of that little fiasco. And so, so he has his, his new mittens. And so now, and I had another pair of fingers gloves that I made. They were conversion mitts. Um, gloves so that they have like a little hood over them. Those pictures are up. They were black and gray. Um, the pony, the ponytail. What do you call it? Messy bun hat with the matching scarf. And then I made another hat for a little girl. And I had um, where she could change out. I made two flowers so she could change out her flowers. Um, and she really liked it. Her grandma sent me a picture. Um, let me see. Let me show it to y'all. Popping sign is a little portable oil heater in here, heating up. Cause it's going, it's drizzly and temperature drops some. Um, okay, here we go. <coughs> There you go. So she has a big pink flower. And then she has the matching flower on right there. I don't know if it's a focus on the kid. No. Come on. Come on. And but her grandma said that she loved she loved her um hat. So 
So, um, so what else? So I made several circle scarves that's already gone to their favorite home. I made another, um, these, this, uh, turban twist headband. I made a couple of these. And this is what it looked like. Let me put it on. So that's what it looks like when you put it on. Okay. And. Then I made some more of the circle scarves. This is some um, sock yarn. It was um, two. I had two balls of sock yarn, and it made this circle scarf with that. So it might be what I might do with some of my sock yarn. Make some more um, little um, circle scarves for myself. And then I have this one, which is gonna be a gift for somebody I know that loves orange. And then I did this one in red. Um, and then what I'm working on now is a blanket. So I'm working on a lap band for an elderly person. Um, and after I finished putting this turquoise in there, I have this mandala cake that I'm going to put in there. And hopefully that will make it big enough. Um, so yeah, so that's what I've been up to, and the project that I'm currently working on, excuse me, is, uh, I don't know how to say it, I keep not saying it right, Suthala, 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 Chachula, however you say his damn name, it is a free pattern, um, from Suthala Crochet.blogspot.com. But it's a free pattern. That's what it looks like. Okay. And the wings are gonna be black. It's purple. And the wings are gonna be black. But I'm making the tentacles and, and I'm making it a little different. You know, I gotta put my own spin on it. So so on the tentacles, get this thing finished. I decided to add some instead of having a solid color. I added also added in between the tentacles, so it's going to have ten tentacles. The pattern calls for five, so in between the tentacles, it also has the colorful little tentacles. And then the eyes are going to go, you know, up here in this area, like one over here. And, let me see, like where my fingers are, you'll have the eyes. So, once I finish the tentacles, then I'll go ahead and start it because it's like one piece and then you stuff it. I have to put the eyes on at the stage where you got to add the eyes. So, I have to put the eyes on. And I was going to put in these. These orange cat eyes. Cat eyes. I don't know if you guys can see them. Yeah. But they're orange. I'm going to put those in. But I'm having fun making this um, Migurumi thingy. So, a um, couple months ago when I was in Winston-Salem, I went to a yarn shop there and I purchased some of the Jelly Beans um, yarn from Plymouth. Yarn, um, and it's 75% acrylic and 25% wool. That orange scarf is made out of this uh, yarn. I only have one ball left and it's this blue and I'm going to do another one of those scarves. Um, the scarves is just a simple double crochet pattern, and I'm using my, not this one, this is a M, I'm using my L hooks, yeah, this one, I'm using my L hook on those patterns. This is a Susan Bates hook, um, I prefer Susan Bates, even the little F hook. That I'm making my um, this Amiga Rumi from is a Susan Bates hook. So, your fire trucks. Well, something going on around here. It's always something going on around here. And uh, 
So that's what I'm using to make um, the cupola. I got fiber going up my nose and it's ugh, probably gonna be sneezing now. So works in progress. That other works in progress besides the blanket I just showed you in this in the cupola is I still have yes, Sharon, my socks. I um, still have the socks that I started, God knows how long ago, the nitpicks, uh, socks in the Felici Fox Glove colorway, they're, they're still, that's as far as I got with them. I got one sock, I got the, I have the Afterthought Heel, Afterthought Heel has been marked in it, and, um, and that's as far as I got. Now you know I I may actually husband a, a husband a pair of socks, but it was using the Charisma Chunky uh, bulky yarn. And I still have the fingerless gloves that I was making another pair of those fingerless gloves using that broken C stitch with some of my hand spun. That brown is some hand spun, and I haven't I just haven't had a chance to work on them. Um, trying to get all this Christmas stuff done and then I can go back to doing stuff for me so <clears throat> so I even have some yarn picked out for another project so this shiny yarn let me see if I don't have the ball day anymore it's Cascade's Sun Seeker I don't know if it's going to be backwards for y'all or not. If it is, I apologize. And I also have a skein of the buttercream from Joann's. And I'm thinking of making... Well, I forgot what I was going to make with that. Oh, yeah. I was going to make another, um, like a hooded um, scarf cow thingy for me. So... I got my project is bagged up for whenever I get a chance to get around to it. And and I was looking through my little basket over there that I had my projects in, stuff that I want to work on for me. And there was something else that I forgot. I don't know, I'm twisting and churning and I'm going off camera and all this other stuff, but my podcast is my podcast. This is not some like little professional vehicle. This is just my way of sharing stuff with y'all. And I know there are people who are like always like, oh, could you do that? Can you do that tutorial again? Could you do that tutorial again? And like better quality and blah, 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 blah. And the answer to that is no. No, I can't. I can't do that. Because this is just me sharing techniques and stuff with y'all. And I've had so many people <clears throat> tell me that they use the bush stitch tutorial and then they made this and they made that and blah, blah, blah. So obviously people, other people can use it. So no, I'm not making a better quality video so you can slurp it off the internet and then you have it posted somewhere it's like it's your video. No, you can just deal with my poor quality. How about that? So, so that's pretty much it. That is an ugly blanket. I don't understand how sometimes they have ugly stuff, the ugliest stuff on these ball bands. That crochet blanket is ugly. Fugly. The color is fugly and the pattern is fugly. If some of y'all don't know what fugly means. You better go ask somebody. It's, it's not that hard to figure out. F and ugly equals fugly. <laughs> so, so that's all I've got going on right now. Um, I'm hoping to get back to spinning uh, once Christmas is over. And um, that's pretty much it. Um, let me see this. It's probably corner corner. It looks like a corner corner. This is that Karen Kindness yarn. It's really soft. Pretty sure it's made in Turkey. Which is probably why it's so darn soft. Oh, no. It was made in China. It's made in China. But it's very soft. 
Hopefully, it got no kind of contaminants in it. It make me sick. So, I'm losing my tan. My forehead is getting lighter. I'm so mad. Uh, and I need to dye my hair. It's uh, it's got gray I am, guys. It's even in the back now. Gray hair is all everywhere. Diabetes will suck all the life out your hair, man. Um, I haven't done any like serious drawing for a while. Um, I just I don't know. I haven't had time. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really having thing to rant about right now because I haven't been driving. <laughs> Well, I okay, can't. I do have one thing to rant Okay, okay, okay. So, you know, if you're catching Uber and Lyft, they're encouraged to listen to directions from the riders because most of the riders are choosing you because something's going on with their own vehicle. They don't have their car to drive, in my case. So they know how to get to their job, most of them. They know how to get from their house, multiple ways to get home from their job, depending on traffic and stuff. So it will behoove you, behoove you, to listen to your passenger when they give you directions to, you know, that your job or whatnot. 99% of the people, since I've been catching Lyft and Uber and stuff on the days that my daughter can't pick me up, listen. But I had 1%, that one person that wouldn't listen. And... I'm like, you know, just go straight through the light and you make a left hand, that first left hand turn and the turn lane into the parking lot and you'll be right in front of my building. I can get out right there and go into the building. But the GPS is showing, telling me to go this way. I'm like, the GPS will have you driving around this building in a circle forever. But I'm just going to follow the GPS. I said, well, you follow the GPS. Just like that. You follow the GPS. So she followed the GPS. I waited for it to take her around the building twice. She couldn't figure out where my stop was. And so I just told her, you know, just stop right here. When she got back to the corner, there's a side entrance that I can go in. So just stop right here. I said, right there, it's just stop right here. I'll get out right here and I'll walk the rest of the way. And so she stopped and got out. So, yeah, you did not get a good review um, because the customer is always right. <laughs> So, especially in this case, you know, I won't about to be late for work because you got to run and follow my GPS. Yeah, you follow your GPS. Keep following your GPS and you might find yourself in the ocean some damn where, you know. But, yeah, so everybody else, if I give them directions, they're very happy to give them. And, you know, and some people be like, oh, wow, I didn't know you could do drive back here, this, that, and the other. I thought this was just shipyard, just took people to the shipyard. I'm like, no, there's a whole neighborhood back here between the two shipyards. So, that's the only rant I have, you know, other than without my vehicle. <laughs> but, it's, it's being worked on. It's, like I said, you know, the whole rear axle has to come out and a new one put in. But it's cheaper than a car pavement, having another car pavement. And because the engine on it is solid. Um, so, it'll probably last me another 10, 15 years. So, I need, once I get it back, I need to start saving, put money aside. To eventually replace Moya. Now, if I won a large sum of money, a large sum of money came into my life, I could just take Moya to some fancy performance auto shop and have her rebuilt from the ground up and it'd be like having a new vehicle. Because, <laughs> you know, it's a 2000 um, Yukon. 2002 Yukon. So it's. It's the, it was the family vehicle, but that's what I've been driving for the last 2002 to now. It's 16 years I've been driving that car. Yeah, so so that's it. That's all I got going on. Um, hopefully everything is good with you guys. Oh yeah, and, and if you go to my Instagram account, you'll see the pictures that I took. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Of my banana plant that Miss Laura gave me. It has been so warm here on the east coast that my banana plant actually has bananas on it mm -hmm. and um if i can find that fucking picture just i gotta get some of this stuff off my phone it's slowing down oh.
Okay. How's that? Guys, you see that? And that's the flower. That big thing right there is the flower. And and see the, the thing around the top? That's the um flower. the little flowers are hidden up under the leaves. And then when they, they come out, they'll form more bananas if they're fertilized. Um, now, if the ones that's up under the leaves are tender, and there are many cultures who have bananas naturally, that they actually take those those pieces. You can look up videos on the banana flower and um, the edible parts of the banana flower. You can look for videos, and it will show you how they prepare those in soups, excuse me, in soups and other um, foods that they add these to because they're very rich in minerals, iron and magnesium, potassium, and just various minerals is good for women's health and the elderly and stuff like that. So, um, and, but my flower, I'm not going to try and figure out how to make anything with it. Uh, because I can just go down to CVS or Rite Aid or Walgreens or Walmart and get me my multivitamins. Yeah, it would probably be pretty cool to do something like that, but I just don't feel like doing it. So next year, if I get one of these, I might actually, um, I might actually try and uh, prepare a dish with that. But look at my bananas, guys. Look at them. Oh, almost made me wish we'd have stayed in Texas. And I could have had me bananas. But it wouldn't have been for Miss Laura's. And it almost looked like plantains. I wonder what kind of banana plant they are. If you recognize what kind of banana plant it is, feel free to tell me. So, yeah. So, this is the only thing I grew, grew this year was banana tree. <laughs> So y'all take care, and uh, hopefully I'll have another video for you next week when I or in between when I finish some more of these projects before I give them off, send them off to where they're supposed to go. And that's it. So y'all take care.